state is it currently in? This four-stroke engine was invented by the German Dieter Hartmann Werthwein, a renowned engine engineer and researcher. Dieter built several prototypes such as the Gypsy engine, which is four cylinders in line and designed for airplanes. With its 160 cc, its power to weight ratio is one horsepower for every one kilogram. This is the valve system. These videos can be seen on his own YouTube channel. To attract the attention of investors, he developed another engine to be adapted to a Honda Monkey motorcycle, where in this case he used everything from the Honda motorcycle, including its gearbox and even the crankshaft, but he adapted its four-cylinder system and a connecting rod with rocker arms, calling it the 125-4. For economic and practical reasons, this prototype was built with valves and pistons from a Honda GX25 lawnmower, 35mm diameter and 32mm stroke. Each cylinder has 30 cc's. Multiplied by 4 gives you 120 cc's. With all this, it manages to develop a power of 6 horsepower. While the Honda single-cylinder lawnmower generates 1 horsepower, if we multiply it by 4, we're talking about 4 horsepower versus the 6 of the new design. Although without going any further, a 110cc single-cylinder Honda Wave motorcycle has 8 horsepower, which makes it doubtful whether this engine is really more efficient. Its firing order is 1, 3, 4, 2 as in any conventional engine. As the bike has four cylinders, its sound is excellent and not far from a big bike, despite only having 120 cc. Its top speed is 50 miles per hour. In 2002, Dieter was driving his Ducati 900 SS, but suffered an accident when he stepped on ice, breaking his spine with irreversible damage, which is why we see him in a wheelchair. Later, in 2007, Dieter modified that same motorcycle, which had a 900cc V2 engine, and generated 80 horsepower at 7500 RPM. He removed his two cylinders and installed his connecting rod system with eight cylinders, managing to attract the attention of many onlookers at an engine exhibition which was in Italy. He used other larger pistons with a diameter of 56 by 44 millimeters of stroke, achieving a displacement of 868 cc, giving rise to its name, the Ducati Eleanor 868. This is a pure work of Werthwein Motorin and Ducati has nothing to do with it. Dieter only used his Ducati motorcycle and called it like that. He used everything he could from the original motorcycle, including the gearbox. The crankshaft was built from zero for a slight necessary modification, but in terms of design, it is practically the same. This 90-degree single overhead cam, two-valve per cylinder V8 engine can rev at 10,000 RPM and produce 70 horsepower. Yes, there are 10 horsepower less than the original engine, but it must be taken into account that the Eleanor engine is a low-cost prototype being compared against one of the most important brands such as Ducati. Remember, he's using parts adapted from other vehicles or built by him. For the Eleanor engine to stay anywhere near the power level is truly a feat. The total weight of the engine was not modified either. Let's take a closer look at how it works. The crankshaft is like any other engine. The connecting rod that comes out of it has a Y-shaped accessory which allows it to drive two pistons at the same time. The pistons have two extra pins. From these pistons comes a new connecting rod. This new mini connecting rod connects to a rocker. The rocker connects again to other mini rods. And finally to the last piston. The timing belt that drives the camshaft rises between cylinders 3 and 4. Now we multiply everything by 2, giving rise to the V8. It is very interesting to see how it works, it even seems that it's doing gymnastics. Compared to four normal rods, the main advantage of the mini rod is that because it is so short, it has less chance of bending than it does with a long rod, which results proportionally in a lighter system than conventional connecting rods. Although it should also be noted that friction points are added. The main connecting rod also has advantages. You'd think it must be four times as strong since you're driving four cylinders instead of one, but no. In a normal engine, the maximum load on the connecting rod occurs only in the combustion stroke, 
and the other three strokes the connecting rod is oversized. The new connecting rod now only works with compression load but also with tension. Let's see. When cylinder 1 fires, it pushes the connecting rod up. At cylinder 3's time, now it pushes down. Then 4 pushes up again. And finally, 2 pushes down. At all times, the connecting rod is in use. The strength of the metal is the same for tension and compression, so you're taking full advantage of the strength of the connecting rod without having to make it stronger. In a normal engine, the maximum load is found only at the moment of combustion, and then it has three stages with less load. Although with all this large number of parts, I think there is no advantage compared to a conventional engine. What do you think? Something to take into account are the second-order vibrations. Since a single connecting rod moves all four pistons, they remain balanced. As of today, there is no new news about this engine, so I have no choice but to assume some of these options. A lack of budget on the part of investors, a lack of advantages over the standard engine, or that simply, being a skilled engineer, Dieter always knew that this engine would never work and this engine was developed just for fun. Let me know in the comments your opinion. Dieter also developed a radial engine built entirely by himself at home, with a gear in the center to drive the slower camshaft. Its name is Stern 15. Also, before inventing these engines, he transformed a motorcycle from two strokes to four strokes. He modified a BMW motorcycle and made it with four valves per cylinder, for which he had to machine and develop a new cylinder head and cams. He is also an experienced pilot and raced in several competitions, although he did not achieve fame. Before the motorcycle accident, Dieter was a mechanical engineer, but he was dedicated to the transportation branch, like building industrial conveyor belts and cranes. After the accident, he took early retirement due to his condition and dedicated himself to the design and construction of all these engines at his own home. He even bought CNC machines. He's currently 66 years old, while his engine is already more than 15 years old. Good